probably would have been helpful if I had pulled up what I read and their ratings before we started the video, but here we are, never doing things in the order that we're supposed to be doing them in. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my December wrap-up for 2020 part two. If you're interested in seeing the first six books that I read, then I will leave the part one down below. But these are the final six for a total of 12 books that I read this month. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have to talk about in part two of this wrap-up is Sky Beyond the Storm by Saba Tahir, the fourth and final book in the Ember and the Ashes series. I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. I freaking loved it with my whole heart. There isn't a lot that I can say about this book without spoiling major plot lines, but I think that it was a perfect conclusion for the series. It kept me on the edge of my seat the entire book wondering whether or not my babies were going to be okay. I am so in love with every single character in this book. The female leads are so strong and where they end up in the end of the book is both heartbreaking but perfect in my opinion. I think that both Laia and Helene have been through way too much during this series and I loved watching how much they grew from where they began in Ember. I also loved Elias, obviously he has a special place in my heart and I am so happy with where his story ended. Overall, I am so sad that this series is over and I won't be seeing these characters anymore, but I definitely recommend this with like my whole heart. It is so well written, so 5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is The Ravens. This is by Cass Morgan and Daniel Page. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows House Kappa Naru, which is the home of the Ravens, which is a sorority group of girls who just so happen to also be a coven of witches. Hopeful Pledge Vivi has never stayed in one place long enough to make any real friends or feel that she belongs, but she is hoping that the house is where that can happen. Scarlet is part of a legacy family and she has hopes of becoming the next president of Kappa House, but she is also hiding a very big secret that if anybody finds out may ruin her position in the house completely and it's like the story of those two girls. I absolutely love witch books. They are some of my favorite stories to pick up. Not to mention this cover is gorgeous. The camera probably doesn't do it justice, but it is so pretty. The book does begin off a little info dumpy, but as the story progresses, it is very hard to put down. It's very fast paced and fun. It's told in alternating perspectives between Vivi and Scarlet, which I thought was a very interesting way to tell the story because we were able to see the same events from both girls and how they viewed each situation differently from each other. I love trying to figure out the mystery behind what happened at the sorority and who was responsible for what. The biggest complaint I do have for the book was was one of the romances. I just felt that it was very forced and unneeded and honestly the love interest was just very boring and bland in my opinion so I was not the biggest fan of that. It also definitely didn't feel like it was set in college. It felt very high school to me but overall it was still a very addictive and fun read so I gave it four out of five stars. The next book I have is The Woman Outside My Door by Rachel Ryan. I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. After the death of his grandmother, seven-year-old Cody invents a new imaginary friend that he calls New Granny. As time goes on, Georgina starts to think that the way that her son is grieving is a little bit troublesome, and so she begins to pay a lot more attention to her son, and that's when she starts to think that New Granny may not be imaginary after all, and her son may actually be in danger, and it's like the story of that. The beginning of the book started very slow, but about halfway through, the story really started to pick up and I became more invested in it. I think that the whole idea of New Granny was very interesting and intriguing, but the marital problems of this couple kind of outshone the mystery behind New Granny, so I kind of wish that there was more of a focus on that rather than 
the problems this couple was going through. I'm personally a big fan of unreliable narrators, so I really liked Regina and trying to figure out whether or not you could trust her point of view. I was not a fan of the husband, Bren. He made me very angry on multiple occasions, and the way that he treated Georgina just didn't sit right with me. While reading, I definitely had a lot of theories about what was going on, which all ended up being incorrect, so I did like how the story ended, and overall, I thought it was entertaining, so I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Thorn. This is by Intisar Kanani, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars as well. It follows Princess Alira, who has been mistreated by her family for a very long time. She is then betrothed to a prince in a far-off land. On the way to his kingdom, she is met by a sorceress who ends up robbing her of her princess identity. When she arrives at the kingdom, she gets assigned to be a goose girl, where she is able to leave her royal life behind. But when trouble surfaces at her new castle, she has to decide whether or not to come forward as the true princess or stay in her new found role, and it's like the story of that. I liked this for the most part, but at times it was very slow and seemed to drag for me. It is a retelling of The Goose Girl, which I personally have never read, so I am not really able to draw the parallels between the two. It gave me very Princess and the Popper vibes, which I don't know how similar those two stories are. So maybe I'm just grasping at straws, but I don't know. I really liked Princess Alira as a main character. I think she was very resilient for the predicament that she found herself in. I absolutely hated Velka. She was a despicable human being, which is the point of the story, but... I could not stand her. I really like the supporting characters of Ash, Rowan, Sage, and Violet. I think that they were such great friends for Alira when she definitely needed some. I also really liked how the romance was not an insta-love situation like I originally thought it was going to be. By the end of the story, it is still growing and becoming what it's going to be, which I very much appreciated. Overall, I did enjoy this. There was a lot of twists that I didn't see coming, and I don't know if that's only because I hadn't read Goose Girl before. Four, but it was a lot of fun, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Promise Bound by Anne Greenwood Brown. This is the third book in the Lies Beneath trilogy, which follows Lily Hancock and a bunch of killer mermaids. I didn't really like this. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. I did enjoy the first book. I ended up giving that a 3 stars, but the series just went downhill after that. Lily became a brat. Calder became a whining little baby. Honestly, this book was just Twilight Breaking Dawn when Edward leaves Bella, but roles reversed with mermaids instead of vampires. It was not a good time. The only redeeming quality of this book that I found was Maris and Pavati, who are Calder's sisters and also killer mermaids. I just wanted more killer mermaids and less whiny babies, you know? So overall, not a fan of this series. I will be unhauling the entire thing. And yeah, two out of five stars. And then the final book that I have to talk about for my wrap-up of December, part two, is Bedazzled by Ryan LaSala. This is such a cute book. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Rafi, who is a cosplayer with hopes and dreams of making it big during Controverse, which is the biggest competitive cosplay event of the year. If he wins, he could win not only a scholarship, which could lead to university, but also his mother's approval. Enter Luca, Rafi's ex-boyfriend, who is the newest competitor on the scene. When they are unexpectedly partnered together during one of the competitions, they must work together in order to win the entire thing, and it's like the story of that. So I just think that Ryan LaSala is like a really cool individual, at least from what I've seen on Twitter and videos that I've watched of them. They just seem like a lot of fun. I enjoyed their last book, Reverie, and so I was excited to pick this up. I didn't think that I was going to enjoy it as much because it is a romance and I am not the biggest fan of romances, but this was a super cute read and I really enjoyed it. I really like the alternating timelines from the before and now, so we got flashbacks of Raffi and Luca's relationship as well as the competition aspect of the story. I think that Raffi and Luca were adorable together. I think that they worked very well together as well and I loved seeing the creative process that they had. I'm really glad that they were able to work out their individual problems as the story progressed. I think that the cosplay setting was a lot of fun. Like I said, I really liked being able to see the creative process and the way that Ryan described how Raffi
he was making his costumes, you were able to picture it very well. Not only the final product and what it would end up looking like, but the whole process was so interesting to read about. I liked Raffi as a main character, but I think that his temper got the best of him a lot of the times, so he ended up treating his friends and Luca very poorly, so it kind of sucked that he didn't really have any development in that sense, but he did suffer from anxiety, and from the reviews that I've read, it was a very good representation of that. I don't personally have very bad anxiety problems, so I cannot speak to that, but like I said, from the reviews, it seems to be well done. I really liked Luca as a character. I think he was very sweet and just like a little soft boy. I also really liked the supporting character, May. She was very sweet and seemed to be a good friend to Rafi and really helped him work through a lot of the issues that he was having. So overall, I think that it was a very quick read. I read it in one day. It's very addictive, very cute, fluffy, you know, all that good stuff. So I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. All right, everybody. So that was my wrap up for December 2020 part two. If you're interested in part Part one, it'll be linked down below. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!